Hello and welcome to another video on linear programming, blending models. Uh, this is going to be a Wall Street firm case, and let's just jump right into it. A Wall Street firm is trying to select a desirable portfolio. The first has a total of $2 million available that can be invested into four bonds. The expected annual return, duration, and worst case scenario are given in the table. The company demands that the worst case return of the portfolio must be at least 7%. The average duration of the portfolio is at most 7 and the company wants to achieve proper diversification so at most 35% can be invested into one bond. Find a way to maximize the expected return on investment. So sorry for the confusing sentence in this last one, but let's uh, just jump right into it. We're going to start with our objective function. And of course, we're going to have this be max, maximize expected return. Let's set that equal to Z. And then we're going to define Z after we define our decision variables. Let's go here. Our decision variables. We're going to look at x of i being the amount invested in bond i or i equaling 1 to three, four. You can see in our index, we're just going to define that as one, two, three, and four. So X of one is referring to bond one. Now we can go in here into our best case expected return, and we can multiply that 12% times the amount invested in bond one plus 9% invested in bond 2 plus that 15% invested in bond 3 and plus 11% invested in bond 4. This will define our maximizing of expected return. Now let's start with our constraints. Look here that we have a couple of constraints. Um, let me highlight these real quick. At least 7% worst case. Average duration is at most 7. And the proper diversification is 35%. So let's go through and actually solve. So let's start with the worst case return. We're going to multiply x1 times that worst case, which is given right here. And multiply the amount uh, invested in 2 and multiply that by the worst case. I'm going to multiply that amount 3, or the amount invested in bond 3 times that 9% as well. And then we're going to have this uh, amount invested in 4. We're going to multiply that by 0 0.4. And of course this has to be greater than or equal to your target value. So that's 0.07%. But if you look at this, you need to know that this is just giving you the summation of amounts times their worst case scenarios. Of course, in, um, in this, we would have on top the amount total invested. This will give us that proper percentage. But in order to um, make this a little uh, cleaner. I'm going to multiply that, this side, by that total. So we're going to have x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4. So Two million dollars right there multiplied by that seven percent. This value has to be greater than seven percent of the two million times that seven percent. So this will be our worst case constraint. Alrighty, now we have to do the proper duration. So we're going to have x1 times the duration there, plus x2 
times the, the duration there, plus x3 times the duration of bond 3, plus x4 times the duration of bond, uh, what is that, bond 4, has to be greater than or equal to, or no, sorry, has to be less than or equal to 7. And of course, in order to get this properly, we're going to have to multiply this by the total on this side. And that's going to give you your duration. And then we have our at most constraint. Well, we can look and see that x1 has to be less than or equal to 0 0.35 times the total. x2 has to be less than or equal to 0 0.35 times that total. x3 has to be less than or equal to 35% of the total invested. Fix that real quick. And x4 has to be less than 35% times that total. Once again, this can be a little tricky, so I'll show this again. Your percentage invested into x1 is equal to the amount invested in x1 over the total invested in x, or the total invested. And this has to be less than that 35%. In order to get this a little cleaner, we multiply this side by the total, and it crosses out, and you get x1 x2, x3 on that side. And then, of course, we need one of the most important constraints. We need to know that x of i must be greater than or equal to 0 for all i equals 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, of course, that's our non-negativity. As you can see, this is a little bit of a basic Wall Street firm example, but um, this is how it's going to look. Thank you for watching, and I hope you look forward to more videos.